If you're a PC gamer, the chances are you're using Windows. While Linux gaming has made great strides in the past few years, most PC games out there are still made and optimized for Windows. But I'm sure we can all list at least three things that we hate about it. Price, bloatware, Corona, I mean Cortana, and the list goes on. We can't possibly fix everything wrong with Windows, but some things can be done by the user. In this video, I'll be sharing with you a few hacks to quickly optimize your PC for both privacy and performance. To make things as painless as possible, I've written a few scripts that will automatically handle everything for you. The links can be found down in the description below. But as Abraham Lincoln once famously said, don't run scripts you don't understand from a random dude on the internet. So allow me to break it down to you so that you understand exactly what you're changing and the benefits you can expect from it. You probably know this already, but Microsoft is really good at pre-installing exactly what the users want, like Farmville, Candy Crush, and Disney Magic Kingdoms. They surprisingly cut down on a lot of these in recent updates, but it still comes with many bloatwares that do not spark joy. To solve this, you want to run the remove bloatware script. But if you never ran a PowerShell script before, you'll first have to change the execution policy to allow it to run. You can do so by right-clicking on the Start button and selecting the Windows PowerShell Admin. Then type Set Execution Policy Unrestricted and enter Y to accept. This warning message sounds scary and all, but it provides as much security as this. In the end, it's just a small barrier to stop users from blindly running untrusted scripts. But unlike those people, you're watching this video, so kudos to you. Now, let's take a look at what the script actually does. The first line simply checks if you're running the script as the administrator, and if you're not, it will attempt to do so. Then, it takes a list of apps that I have classified as bloatware and uninstalls each one of them. This includes even the ones that you couldn't normally uninstall from the start menu. My recommendation here is to look over the list by right-clicking on the script and selecting Edit, and if you want to exempt any of these from being uninstalled, simply comment them out as shown here. Once you're happy with the list, right-click on the script and click Run with PowerShell. If there's something that I missed, please leave a comment down below and I'll update the script. As of Windows version 1909, this successfully removed all the bloatwares for me. The next step is to configure the privacy settings. If you never bothered looking at your privacy settings before, you'd be surprised to see how intrusive Windows is. It ranges from innocuous behaviors like collecting your language preference, to downright invasive, tracking the apps you launch, websites you browse, and what you type on your keyboard, among many other things. And of course, most of these will be faithfully sent over to Microsoft if you're not careful with your settings. I always opt out of everything during a fresh installation, but you notice that not everything is necessarily disabled. To solve this, I have written a registry file to lock all these down. Be sure to restart Windows for the effects to take place. Making these changes will disable everything from general, speech, inking and typing personalization, diagnostics and feedback, activity history, location tracking, and a few other things that cannot be controlled from the privacy settings. Most of these can be re-enabled through the privacy settings if desired. In addition to these, it also disables pesky Cortana for good. Notice that some of the Cortana settings are completely removed after you apply this trick. It will also disable Bing search, which prevents your local searches from being leaked out to the internet. But in case Cortana is your waifu and Bing is your jam, I have also written registry files to re-enable them separately. Finally, I have also disabled the delivery optimization feature which is essentially a peer-to-peer -peer mode for Windows updates. This means that if this is enabled, 
you'll be sharing Windows updates with computers on the same network or even the internet, depending on your settings, which will consume your resources. Now that your PC is unbloated and respects your privacy, you can run the gaming optimization registry file. I have covered these in my previous Mac 17 overclocking video, but decided to turn it into a single registry file for your convenience. To recap what this does, the system responsiveness is set to zero to prevent lower priority applications from denying CPU resources to games. The GPU priority and priority values are set to 8 and 6 respectively in order to give higher resource priorities to gaming. In addition to these changes from the previous video, I have also modified the network throttling index to maximize networking throughput. Full disclosure here though, I don't want to oversell these hacks as something that will magically boost your performance through the roof. It's very situational when these changes will actually help your performance, so keep that in mind. And there we have it folks, my personal gold standard for a fresh installation of Windows 10. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any personal hacks that you would like to share. As always, hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.